Hello everybody. I've been asked a couple of times if I could do a tutorial video on how I do my covers, which I will show you now in this video. So to start with, the equipment that I have is a AKG C2000B microphone. It's a condenser microphone and on Amazon it's about £160, which for its price, I have to say, is pretty good because it's, it's, a, it's a really clear microphone, really clear and crisp. And uh, the interface that I have is a Steinberg UR22MKII audio interface, like that. That's what it is. And on the internet, on Amazon, it's about hundred pounds I think which as 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 uh, as this microphone is is about 60 pounds a bit more expensive I think both for its price is really really good now uh, of course I have a pop shield which you can pick up for about a fiver or a tenner on Amazon and the also have me Epiphone Epiphone J200 guitar and uh, the I have a MacBook, and this is the mid two thousand and fourteen Retina thirteen inch one. And uh, also as well, this is my view outside my window. Yes, a bit rainy, obviously, but that's my view outside my window that I look out of all the time. But um, anyway, back to the video. Um, I use Logic Pro X. And uh, this is local boy in, in the photograph which I up, up, uploaded yesterday. So uh, how it works is I open a new track and uh, I s select both audio and guitar and then they come up like that on screen and I change and for acoustic on the library of Logic, I go on to acoustic guitar, just there. Get it clear on there. There we go. And then open that, and then put it on natural strum. And then on the uh, controls, which is in Logic, I always put about sixty percent of ambience on it, and about not one hundred percent reverb, otherwise I'd be in a cave. 40% reverb and generally all the low, mid and high is all in the middle just like that and I always have to I always have to make sure as well when I when I plugged it in oops, it? that uh, it's plugged into the audio interface there and it's in input 2 so on logic I'd go on to um, I there which is input is it input? what is it? Inspector, I think that's what it's called. And then at the top here, just here, I've always got to make sure that this is always on input two, which you go to input and then to input two, because if I don't have it on input two, nothing comes in. And same for focal as well. I always have to make sure that that's on input one, because it's plugged into input one on the interface, just there. And because it's a condenser microphone, I always have to switch on and some power, which is at the at the back here, just there. It's it's, it's a little button that you have to turn on in, in order for the microphone to work. And then I do the cover. I I do I put on enable there for recording, and then I film myself. Believe it or not, on top of a stack of DVDs so I put it on here against this pick box and then on the camera I change it round there's a little picture of me when I was a little kid there um, and then I, I change the um, camera facing so it's facing me and the microphone as you'll see in the covers that I do and then I record myself 
and so I'm putting it in to logic and then as it also as well on vocal for uh, reverb uh, I put it on I use I use platinum reverb which is here and I usually put on about 30% wet and 1.55 seconds of reverb time so it has a nice little ring off but it just adds a little bit of life to the song in my personal opinion so I do that and then in a second I'll show you how I do it in iMovie how I get it to sync in with the, the, the video so I've mixed and edited the song all there so then I I usually always mix on top of the vocals because I I personally feel that the most important part of a song mix wise that make sure it's prominent is the vocals so the vocals as you can see in the in the video are just slightly louder than the acoustic guitar so I I usually put the acoustic a little bit quieter than the uh, vocal or around about the same but anyway uh, so I I get the whole project like that then just uh, so everything not cut off there we go so that's got the whole of each track the whole song then I, I go to file then bounce or the shortcut actually is command and B just like that and then I usually have it as a, a wave or a, a WAV file and uh, press OK and then it bounces the whole track so there's local boy in the photograph call it local and then it's and then it's bouncing there we go then I open iMovie which is down here on the taskbar and then I go to projects create new movie then just as a as a side note I put uh, I name it local boy in the photograph like that press ok and there it is open it again and then click on the there and then import media click that go to so my folder so it'll be on documents go to local boy there we go and then select the the file from the from that open that that's imported and then import more so I go to I, I know there's another sh shortcut on I I move to do this but I go to downloads and then I pick this file here and uh, I'll get that and then I get into focus and then drag it into iMovie just like that there I am and then it's imported so then I put the the file mp4 file or the the video file in zoom it in a bit and then this is where it gets a little bit fidgety and complicated so I might I might have to is there a way I can put my iPhone up I get the file in and then put the uh, WAV file in and put it at the bottom of the video and then this is where I have to put it in sync with the uh, video that I did as I was as, as I was as I was miming along so as you can see it's out of sync So, I zoom it in a little bit more, go across there a bit, and then where this is in the video, let's 
get it into focus. There we go. I, I drag along the WAV files so it's absolutely in sync with the video. So just zoom in a little, a little bit more. So drag it along like that. And then that should be in sync. But then obviously because I, I I want all of you to hear the actual thing that I did in Logic, I turned down the volume of the of the file itself, the video, all the way down to zero. So all it has is the is this file coming in. And there we go. And then after that I usually crop about here-ish so shift and then so I'm selecting both and then I right click about here-ish and split clip take that bit out and then I put I go into transitions and then put a fade to black in And it starts a, a little bit too soon. So what I do is I drag the video back a bit. Because I put a fade in now, I put it to about there-ish. It is quite complicated, as you can tell, a little bit fidgety and a bit annoying and, and frustrating. But so I actually have to sometimes drag it back again. So it should be in sync still. A little bit slightly out. Uh, pull it back a bit. There we go. Right, that's worked. So turn that back down again, and that should be all right now as a start. Perfect. And then right at the, the end of the video, oh God, there's a massive one that I need to crop out. So then, as I said, I go to the end of the video. Right, there we go, that's the end. So then I put on a fade, put it to about three seconds, like that. I just make sure that it's correctly in time. Right, that's a bit too early, so pull the movie out a little bit more. And there we go and that's it and then I do whatever I put a, a little bit of a filter on it on something and then I export it as a I've got I go up to here I think you if you're a Mac user you'll know all of this just go there to file and then I put stereo on X local blind photograph cover put the resolution to 720p quality high compressed yeah all of that and then and then press next and then it exports and then I, I upload it to YouTube. There we have it. That's how I make all my covers. See you later.